Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin here at the Southwest Crop Diagnostic Days, catching up with Jake Monroe, Soil Management Specialist for the Ontario Minister of Agriculture, Food and Agribusiness. Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Hey, I want to talk about uh, this experiment you've got going here, water infiltration. It is so important when we get water to be able to get it into the soil. Uh, we don't want runoff. We want to make sure we optimize that moisture. Um, Tell us about what you're doing here and how you've set this experiment up. Yeah, absolutely. So really, you know, more of a demonstration. We're, we're here, like you say, at Ridgetown, uh, looking at soil health evaluation, kind of what can you do in the field to, to get a sense of how well your soil is functioning. And so we looked at basically differently managed soils. So from a fence row, uh, you know, non-agricultural soil through to, you know, a, a perennial crop like alfalfa or a corn soybean wheat rotation all the way to continuous soybeans with, with plowing every fall really wanted to see you know how does that impact soil structure and uh, and from my perspective how does that impact uh, your soil's ability to to take in a big rain uh, get it down to where the crop roots are and, and where the crop can make use of it and obviously i mean that management choice can uh, play a big impact on infiltration run us through uh, i guess your results there on your screen yeah so just again really simple demonstration just a just a, sing, a single uh, ring of pvc pipe and uh, allowing uh, the equivalent of an inch of water uh, to soak into each of these soils and you can see really uh, qu quite a dramatic difference across the from the fence row soil uh, you know non-cropped really excellent soil structure which is what we saw here um, to the continuous soybean plowed very little residue return uh, you know some crusting at the soil surface uh, and we see anywhere from seven seconds of, of soaking in that uh, that first inch uh, down to six and a half minutes but even more importantly once you've wetted that soil uh, and if you get a, you know an even larger amount of rain, how can your soil you know perform big thunderstorm? Maybe get a couple of inches of rain. And again, with our our reference soil, you know eight seconds for that second inch compared to over 20 minutes. We were just waiting and waiting for that uh, water to go down. Um, so those are the two extremes. But but really, where we have you know small grains in rotation, especially in combination with a cover crop, reduced tillage, uh, or if we have perennial in rotation, that's where we see those numbers come way down. You know, get somewhere in between, and and we can get you know that that first inch of, uh, of rain uh, soaked in, infiltrated, less than a minute and, and a minute for the second. Mm. Now, Jake, you've got some roots here and it really does show what happens if we can't get water into that soil. We get a tough layer, we get, uh, we get concrete. Yeah, so really neat tillage pan that we, we saw here. Um, so we're located here just on a, on a research range. It's all in corn this year for some herbicide trials, but this is a problem area uh, of this range. and, and you know, low-lying area. Uh, rest of the crop looks quite good, but right in behind me, uh, very stunted, nitrogen deficient. And so we did a little digging here at the diagnostic day. We, we used a penetrometer, uh, a tile probe, uh, and really found some strong resistance when we we're pushing down, even just at the two-inch mark. And so a little bit of more digging, uh, digging out a, a uh, corn root system. Uh, it didn't take long to kind of figure out what was what was happening. Where we've got horizontal roots, we've basically got a, a tillage pan or root restrictive layer um, from from continuous um, uh, cultivation happening, kind of on that two inch depth, probably in this low lying area under marginal conditions. Soil not be, quite being fit enough. Some smearing happening, and again that tillage happening year after year in the same same location. So uh, night and day difference, uh, and when it uh, when it comes to you know seeing these areas in the field, it, it is often you know those those lower lying areas that tend to be just a little bit wetter, a little bit marginal when the when the tillage is being done or the planting is being done, where we see these issues cropping up. So Jake, when you talk to growers about what you're seeing here, you know what what's your takeaways here? I mean, like they can make significant management decisions to impact water filtration, soil health, and eventually yield. Yeah. So kind of on uh, on the short term here, with, with what we're looking at behind me, I think really. A lot of that comes down to, to timeliness of tillage and then also kind of varying the depth of tillage so that we're not you know, creating a, a, a pan or a, a root restrictive layer just at the same depth year after year. Um, and kind of from a broader perspective, we really saw the impact today of, uh, of management. So, you know, uh, crop rotation, getting small grains in rotation, perennials if possible, uh, you know, minimizing tillage so that you have connectivity 
from the top of the soil uh, down to lower lower layers so that when you get that big rainfall and, and you know we want it we need it right this time of year uh, you can capture as much as possible of that rain get it to the crop where it's uh, going to contribute to strong yield. Great stuff Jake always appreciate you making some time for real agriculture. Thanks for having me.